There are two candles lit. Tonight is Maundy Thursday, the day we celebrate the Last Supper. Jesus has already entered Jerusalem to great fanfare and people spreading their clothes and palm branches along the pathway. Jesus has gone to the temple and overthrown the tables of the money changer, the, the things that were stopping uh, people from having direct access to God. Jesus was anointed in Bethany by the woman with the alabaster jar of pure nard. And one of Jesus' closest disciples, Judas Iscariot, had gone to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus. And our story picks up here. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover meal? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city. A man carrying a water jar will meet you. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Prepare for us there. The disciples left, came into the city, found everything just as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. That evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve. During the meal, Jesus said, I assure you that one of you will betray me, someone eating with me. Deeply saddened, they asked him, one by one, It's not me, is it? Jesus answered, It's one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread with me into this bowl. The Son of Man goes to his death, just as it is written about him. But how terrible it is for that person who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And he said, Take, this is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank of it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. I assure you that I won't drink wine again until the day when I drink it in a new way in God's kingdom. After singing songs of praise, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus and his disciples came to the place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to them, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. He began to feel despair and was anxious. He said to them, I'm very sad. It's as if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert. Then he went a short distance farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that, if possible, he might be spared the time of suffering. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you stay alert for one hour? Stay alert and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. Again he left them and prayed, repeating the same words. And again, when he came back, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know how to respond to him. He came a third time and said to them, Will you sleep and rest all night? That's enough. The time has come for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. Look, here comes my betrayer. Suddenly, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a mob, carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests, legal experts, and elders. His betrayer had given them a sign, Arrest the man I kiss, and take him away under guard. As soon as he got there, Judas said to Jesus, Rabbi, then he kissed him. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew a sword and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his ear. 
Jesus responded, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like an outlaw? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple, but you didn't arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all his disciples left him and ran away. One young man, a disciple, was wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They grabbed him, but he left the linen cloth behind and ran away naked. This is the story of the night of Maundy Thursday. This is the story of the Last Supper. Jesus gathered his disciples together, his apostles, his twelve, the disciples whom he dearly loved, gathered them all around the table. And he preached to them, he prayed for them, and he warned them. This was Jesus' last meal, and this is what he chose to do for his last meal. The people around that table Jesus had chosen. The food on that table Jesus had chosen. It makes me uh, remember that old game that we would play as children. What would be your last meal? If you knew you only had one more meal to eat, what would that last meal be? Would it be ice cream? Would it be a steak? Would it be, I don't know, sushi? What would it be for your last meal? But tonight I'm not concerned about what a last meal would be. I'm concerned about who would be at your last meal. If you knew you had one meal left, who would be at your table? Which of your family and friends would you want there around you? How would you want to spend that time? What would you talk about? What would you want to say to them? And then, how would you pray for them? And Jesus prays for his disciples, that they would have strength for the days ahead, that they would have strength for the job ahead, that they would have spreading the good news throughout the world. Jesus prays for them. Stop and take time to pray for those people in your life whom you love. Pray for their blessing, that they might be blessed in every way, blessed in order to be a blessing. And pray for them to be happy. Pray for them to be content. Pray for them to have all they could ever need. The cup of wine, the plate of bread, it stands for communion with God, a oneness with God, that God sustains our very life, our daily bread God gives us. God gives us his spirit in our lives to move and act throughout the day, and God sustains us with relationships of family and friends in our lives. But God's Holy Spirit also pulls us out into the world, that we might go into the world and be God's hands and feet in the places in this world where God is surely needed. Where are the places in this world that God needs us? Where does God need you with your talents, your abilities? Where are you being called to serve God? Take time. Consider these things. Stop and pray. Follow the commandment on Monday, Thursday to do likewise, just as Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. How can you go and do likewise and do it amongst the people whom you love the most? Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, in order to show us the way to relationship with you and with other people. And we pray that you might bless our lives, that we might go out into the world and be your hands and feet in the places in this world where your light is surely needed and your good news surely needs to be proclaimed. We pray thanks for the people in our lives that love us and bless us and care for us. And we pray that you bless them, that you bless them as they can use that blessing and go forward and bless other people. 
And we pray for all of our family, our friends, our loved ones, those whom we hold closest to our hearts. We pray for their health and we pray for their happiness and wholeness. Lord God, we pray for this world where it groans in pain that you might send us to be your light and your good news in those dark places. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. There is one day left until Jesus is crucified.